Okay, so I wanted to talk about why I think biohacking, done the way people are usually doing it, is uh, pretty stupid. And um, give you guys a few reasons why. And uh, more importantly, it's always easy to uh, you know, say negative things about something. But uh, more importantly, I want to give a better alternative. So the, the way the culture organizes around this idea is essentially that they're going to take the biochemistry of the human body and they're going to try to understand certain, certain parts, certain pathways in a lot of detail. And then they're going to try to use that understanding to um, hack the system, right? So for instance, like if we understood the mechanisms behind muscle growth at a molecular level, okay? Say um, muscle hypertrophy, um, let's say the myofibular hypertrophy, right? So there's two types of muscle hypertrophy. There's a myofibular hypertrophy, um, essentially the, the, the active contracting fibers getting bigger and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So it's essentially the the stuff surrounding the, the muscle fibers that provides the energy for the, the muscle fibers to contract, um, that growing bigger. So let's say we were, we were trying to hack this myofibular hypertrophy and we find that, um, hmm, let's say uh, mTOR, right, is a big one in this pathway. And there's a lot of research on mTOR and so we can go into all the depth of why we think uh, mTOR is super important for muscle growth. And then let's say we think it's so important that now, let's say you're going to, um, you're a biohacker. And so you think, yeah, I've, I've got a wonderful, you know, this is it, mTOR, I've got it. I figured out muscle growth. So um, I'm just gonna find something that's gonna really activate this mTOR pathway, okay? Here's the problem, there are many problems. Um, number one, the pathway that we isolated, in this case mTOR, right, is, is never gonna be the be all end all of whatever function we're trying to hack, right? In this case, muscle growth. So mTOR is not responsible entirely for muscle growth. And, and often what we find when we think stuff like this in biochemistry is, um, well, actually kind of has nothing to do with it, right? Or maybe we, we activated and nothing happens, right? Um, the other thing is um, there could be a lot of side effects to, to kind of uh, increasing or trying to activate this one pathway, right? Like, Maybe it activates muscle growth, but it also is involved in cancer, right? This is one of the things, this is one of the problems with, with the, um, a lot of the research in stem cells, right? This, this stem cells are really a, a wonderful thing, but if you're not careful with them, this, this even the, the, especially the pluripotent stem cells that could differentiate and, and turn into any cell in any part of the body, um, well, that's also a characteristic that really matches uh, cancer risk, right? So um, we've got to find, you know, the researchers have to find a way, like how do we find a way to harness the stem cells for useful things, but we don't run into like, huh, like giving people cancer, right? It's, this is a big thing, is the, the body is such an insanely complex system that even if you were to do an excellent job of isolating a pathway within that system that you think you know exactly what it's going to do, you don't, right? We, we don't have, uh, we're really so far from a complete understanding of the human body that any pathway or proteins we isolate, um, remember, they're all interacting with thousands and thousands of other proteins, each of which can have different shapes at different times, they bind to different things, they're complexes, right? Substrates, is, it's so, so, so complex. 
um, that, that you really have no idea how things are going to play out until you try it. And generally when you try it, you, you pretty much always find it doesn't work the way you planned out, which is why drug discovery and, and production is such a long and resource intensive process, right? And biohacking, this is not an enormous company working on something that teams of researchers have worked on for years and decades, right? And then they're, they're testing it with these enormous studies. These are single people taking a comparatively random guess based on the research that some of these people have done and just the studies that are out there, but they're not doing any studies of their own. And now they're just going to try to run through that process without any, any studies just on themselves, right? And so this is an interesting idea. I'm, I'm not totally against it. I think um, actually that this is a great way to push science forward <laughs> for people to, you know, just try it on themselves and see what happens. But the thing is, if this is something you're doing for yourself because you want to see progress towards some goal that you have, you want to build muscle, it's generally going to be an extremely ineffective and very risky and generally expensive way to do things, right? Here's the alternative idea, right? It's easy to shit on something, but I have an alternative. And here's, here's the thing. If we, instead of focusing on hacking the system, this is a problem I have with biohacks. They just, the focus is on hacking the system, right? But there's a difference between hacking the system and working with the system, okay? What I like to do, I'm, I'm not against the idea of hacks, but what I like to do if I'm looking at something that I want to improve is not look for what are the things that no one is is doing or trying that might work, but rather what are the things that would be the most effective, right? Where's my highest return on investment gonna be? And often those are the things other people are doing. Sometimes it's not, right? But, but there's a different, it's, it's a different route to look for the most effective things versus to look for the weird things that might work, right? And I generally think the biohacking community they spend, what happens is they spend all their time sort of researching all these different molecules and these different pathways and reading these books and spending money on all these different supplements, but they forget the basics. They don't, they don't spend that much time on the basics. What are the basics? So in that, in that um, building muscle example that we talked about, well, that, that biohacker guy, maybe he isn't doing a very good job of strength training. Maybe he isn't strength training at all, right? And that we know, everyone knows, strength training is extremely effective for building muscle, for building strength. And it's not hacking the system, it's working with the system, right? Because our bodies have evolved to respond to stimulus. They need to move, if they need to produce force, they adapt to produce that force, right? They adapt to whatever stimulus we, we put on them. So, um, it's something we've evolved to do, you know, arguably since uh, sort of the evolution of muscles, which was hundreds of millions of years ago, right? Versus this thing that maybe has never been tried before at all. So, so here's another example, right? If, you, if, you're, um, if you're doing all this, uh, maybe you're, this is another big thing with biohackers is like longevity. How can they live for the longest period of time? And already, I think this is a little, maybe as a thesis, it's a little suspect, right? But um, let's avoid that for, for a minute. And um, okay, we're trying to live as, as long as we can, right? Again, we could go through the same process. Okay, what, what is aging? What pathway do we think is uh, causal to aging? And now what proteins are, are, are central in that pathway? And now how do we target those proteins, right? What molecules, what drugs do we use, right? Um, and so we're doing all this issues, we're spending all this time, right? But, and, and maybe we find something, right? Maybe we find something and we think it'll work. Okay, great. So you got that guy on one end, but maybe 
he's not paying that much attention to, again, what are the basics, the fundamental things that we know work and work really well, right? Food, right? Whole foods, fresh foods, extremely important. We know this. It's very clear. There are a lot of studies. Um, not, only, not only do we know it works, we know it works well, right? We know exercise works. We know it works well. We know um, sort of uh, being less stressed. Not being stressed is very helpful, right? Having a, a, a close group of, uh, of friends is extremely helpful, right? So, you know, if, if you were going to, again, if, if you were going to try, if you were going to, your thing was, I'm going to like try to live as, as long as, as possible, right? Should you really spend your time like reading all these books and trying to figure out which, which pathways and which molecules and which, you know, which drugs you're going to take? Or are you better off first getting all those basics right, right? Working on, on meditation working on sleep, working on exercise, having a good group of friends, right? Um, and the thing is, you can, it's not an easy thing to do, right? To be good at all of those things. It's, it's not, it's not a, like, hmm, take two hours on Sunday and uh, wow, I'm gonna have like sleep figured out for the rest of my life. No, it's, it takes a long time to figure each of these things out, right? So again, I don't have, a catch-all, you should never try, you know, something new like this biohacking thing. But if you are going to be doing some biohacking, right, you have to. They, they, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't perfect your basics first, right? You should always start with those fundamentals. And then if you want to add on top of that, some interesting experiments and biohacking, you can do that. But that's not what I see with the biohacking community. What I see with the biohacking community generally is that they, their focus goes straight to the, like, how can we hack this system? Right. And they have, frankly, I don't think any idea how complex the body is and It, it turns into this, this confidence error, right? Of being too confident that we know what's going on when really we don't. So instead, work with the basics first, get those really good. And if you still, yeah, you know, you're like, okay, I've got my close group of friends. I sleep well every night. I've got great exercise. I've got my whole program figured out, right? I'm doing all these things. My diet is great. How do I still, you know, like optimize things? How do I still, I still want to like really push to live even, even longer. Yeah. Okay. Maybe play around with some, some things on top of that. Sure. But, um, make sure you're doing those, those fundamentals first. So whatever function you're looking at, building muscle, building strength, living longer, what, whatever you're interested in, find those fundamentals first, find those things that we know are effective and that are very effective work on those and then add the biohacking if you want on top.